this is Richard Lund and his <laughs> wife Eleanor Lund. And they've uh, they've been for years volunteering part of their property as a slash collection site. And uh, so my first question for you is, what made you guys uh, even consider to volunteer part of your property for a slash collection site? Well, I I think that we did it because. Uh, it was an area that we didn't utilize very much. It was along the main road, and we felt that the program that Larimer County was starting at that time for uh, individuals, uh, property owners, or you could do it as a group, uh, we felt that it was a, a good thing to do, uh, and uh, it worked out well for everyone. Now, there are other collection sites around the state, but in many cases they charge money to bring uh, Slash to, to the site. You don't charge any money, uh, or do you? No, that is correct. We, we have not charged and did not charge uh, this last year. However, there was one year that we did not get uh, a grant where we could pay for the chipping. And we did ask uh, uh, residents that dropped off Slash uh, if they would send in a donation to the fire department. Now I know over the years you, you use your own tractor and equipment to uh, to help pile the stuff and, and you actually bought a chipper and uh, <laughs> rebuilt it as I, re as I recall. Uh, uh, have you been able to persuade any of your other neighbors to help you with this stuff? Uh, the year that uh, we, we got the chipper as a backup uh, uh, because of the beetle kill coming on, we thought there might be more uh, slice than before, which ended up, and that was the case. Uh, we had neighbors, uh, the word went out, and we had neighbors come over and spend two and three hours uh, hand feeding the chipper, and we were able to do a good job. Now I know you normally have uh, were able to get grant money to help uh, uh, chip the uh, the slash and at least get it down to a manageable size. But uh, how did you accumulate so much slash this time around? Well, uh, as everyone knows, uh, the Beatles moved in several years ago, and uh, when they moved in and people started uh, taking down their uh, trees that were infested. Uh, there started to be more and more slash come in. Uh, this last year, we did have a grant. Uh, it was a matching grant, uh, and our 50% was uh, $5,300. Uh, we utilized almost 100% of that uh, by the middle of the summer, late summer, uh, to pay for chipping. And the slash continued to come in, and uh, we were very fortunate that one of the uh, uh, businesses here that has a lumber yard, uh, Morgan Timber, uh, was at a, uh, a meeting that was held after the Crystal Fire, and he volunteered to bring his uh, chipper up and chip all of our slash, because at that time the uh, site was almost full and he did not want us to uh, have to shut the site down if we possibly could.
Mark did a wonderful job for us. He uh, was very community minded, and uh, we spent uh, one day uh, from about uh, eight thirty in the morning running steady until almost uh, two thirty in the afternoon. Uh, taking care of the slice that we did not have money to pay for because we had already used up our grant money. So, Mark, you, you've been involved with uh uh, with our tree farmer, a local tree farm group, for an awful long time. You come to our meetings, uh, You both you and Karen come, and uh, my question is, you've got a big operation, but a lot of the people you're helping around here are little people that sometimes can't even afford your wor to uh, get you going, and, uh, and other times uh, uh, it probably wouldn't be economical for you to work with them on an individual basis. So why are you helping us? Why do you do what you do? Uh, <clears throat> thanks for the promotional. It was more than is deserved. Uh, basically, forestry is community-based, and all the benefits that come from forestry, if it's done right, should stay in the community. So when you work with people, it doesn't matter how big or how small, that has no bearing on it. It has to do whether they are sincere in being stewards of the land and keeping forestry community based. Uh, the fellow that taught me that was Ray Mahaffey when I first started logging. Uh, he had a, several landowners that wanted to do some forestry work up around Estes Park. And uh, I was a very, very, very small operator then. And uh, one of the landowners had eight trees. And uh, I said, come on, Ray, I can't go over and cut eight trees. And I was pretty much a one-man show, and I thought I was too big for that. And he said that they want to manage their property, too. And the important thing is that everybody in the community participates. And thanks, Ray, and nothing's changed in 40 years. Richard Lund was generous enough to put forth his property and put all the effort into that site up there and it looked like he needed some help and it wasn't just me coming up there and grinding. There were a lot of people involved in that. There were a lot of people organized that site. Uh, there were folks showed up and fed the grinder. Uh, <clears throat> there were folks that had organize the material to be ground and that's a huge item because if it's truly community based and not a tip fee or not for hire one of the things that makes doing that kind of work easy is if the material is really clean somebody worked real hard at having clean material and have it well organized also uh, Brewster family donated the trucking and they came up there and they trucked all that material and they're going to try to use it for bedding and they're a family-owned ranching business that's been part of this community for generations and uh, they saw a sense of value and a sense to an opportunity to contribute so I think there are a lot of partners in this thing and it isn't something that I did it's something where I get a chance to pay back for all the community support that I've had over the years there are a lot of people that were involved in uh, in this but there are a lot more people still 
that haven't discovered that uh, forest management is needed and uh, we've got a, a, a big problem now with the mountain pine beetle. We've had a big problem for years around here with, uh, with wildfire. Uh, what would you tell those people that have forested property but haven't uh, started any forest management work on it yet? Uh, <clears throat> My wife and I have a, a theory that we promote real hard and we call it the Kimby. The NIMBY is not in my backyard and that's exactly the opposite of what you need to be doing. It's Kimby which is keep it in my backyard and you can buy forest products that are produced anywhere in the world. But when you buy forest products that are locally produced you have all these secondary benefits that <clears throat> occur from uh, managing your own property. You may not in this current market conditions be paid stumpage or value for your timber but for many of these landowners that isn't why they bought uh, their property in the first place. Good forest management is uh, makes their property safer from wildfire, it enhances wildlife, watershed, all the multiple use, recreation, Many of these people, they bought their property, it was recreation driven in the first place. Because they paid a lot more for, if they just wanted a piece of ground, they could have bought a piece of ground out in western Nebraska or eastern Kansas for one twentieth of the money. So obviously this property has a great deal of intrinsic recreational value to them. And so good forest management promotes all the other uses and all the other benefits. They're all tied together. So my answer to them is, you know, there's an old saying, best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago, second best time is today. Well, in western forests, by the nature of managing and harvesting your overmature timber, when you do that, you automatically plant new trees. That's how our forests regenerate. So think of not just as harvesting but as planting a tree and if you're going to do that and this property is valuable to you what's the best time to start today get organized get part of a group become a tree farmer get to know your friends and neighbors pool your resources and get started today I'm a businessman I'll help you if you need business help but if you're going to do this on your own take advantage of your friends and neighbors support and the get together and take action. If you're ready to take action to improve the health and sustainability of your forests, protect watersheds to ensure abundant clean water, and sequester carbon dioxide to ensure clean air and reduce global warming, we can help. We can provide you with scientifically based, practical, and effective forest management information. We can introduce you to honest and reliable contractors that have proven themselves working on our properties. We can introduce you to those willing to collaborate with you to achieve much more than you can individually. We're your neighbors, just down the road behind the green and white tree farm sign. We're Colorado tree farmers. Contact us and together we can make a difference.